Hey guys, this is Obsidian Chill. Got another video for you today. And I wanted to do, um, not necessarily a follow-up, but kind of a continuation of my previous video with allies. Um, I've kind of been bombarded with questions when I log into the game. And I mean, they're perfectly valid, so I mean, I, I'm not like harping on that at all. But talking about the passives in terms of like what the allies do with each rank of passives or, or how do the passives or star levels impact the allies. And that's a perfectly reasonable question because we have absolutely no idea as players how they're supposed to work because we can only guess. Um, so I want this video to act as full transparency on my part. I'm going to tell you everything I know about allies and like what I haven't shared or what like things are broken or not broken because I, I don't know I don't know if they're broken or not. So it's basically we're going to play a little game of is it working is it uh, is it intended or not uh, or is wor is it working as intended? Uh, we're going to play that little game today because how are we supposed to know? So I mean <laughs> when you see when you see like Emperor Aquaman when a supercharge is used ally power cooldown is reduced. What it doesn't say is like if you use a 25, 5000, 10000 each is different. And star level impacts how different the or the cooldown is reduced. So we're missing like giant descriptions on the actual abilities, which is the important thing. But I mean, if we go to their biography, then we have like paragraphs like uh, of who they are and their backstory. Because who doesn't know who Aquaman is? Uh, I mean, if you're playing a DC Universe Online based game where DC like a character is tied to the DC Universe, I'm pretty sure you know who Cyborg is. I mean, you don't have to read his like paragraph biography about what he is and like his like when i was younger i thought if you worked hard enough life would treat you fair i mean i don't care who cares why why would you care you already know who he is that's why you're playing the game what i would care about what you should care about is his actual abilities I, why do we have paragraphs for stuff that no one cares about and then when stuff that we actually do care about and is actually important is like one sentence <laughs> Because that would clear up a lot of this stuff. Because some of it just doesn't make sense. Like the like the Flashpoint Batmans or I mean this whole summon pet damage to hear my call BS. Or even Flash re reduces time between when you're in combat and return normal speed. Once again, that doesn't make any sense. Because com when you when you're in combat or the the whole like combat slowdown or whatever they want to refer to it as, that's because you've been targeted by an NPC or if you or you damaged it. If you hit a sparring target and you slowly back away, you're going to drop combat because you're out of its range. Same thing if it's an NPC that has a target and you forgot to kill it. I mean, you have to go back all throughout the duo or the solo or whatever to find it, then you kill it and you'll drop combat because there's nothing else to target you. It has no impact on Flash. Flash won't have any impact on that. That's game mechanics. That's, that's core mechanics in the game. You know... <laughs> So, I mean, once again, that, that just ability doesn't make sense. Like, once again, I haven't tested that because I, I don't even know how to test this to, or to create a test because it doesn't even mechanically make sense in terms of the confines of the game and everything else. It's just, to me, I don't know if we're going to get any transparency out of the developers that, who created this. I really hope we do because, I mean, the reason why I am more annoyed with allies, a lot of people say, like, oh, yeah, it's just like... A, you know, the new thing to make to spend money on. It's like, I understand DC has to move in that kind of direction because we have like, what, 37 artifacts or almost 40 artifacts out. I mean, you can't have like new artifacts released every single episode. It's going to be getting ridiculous. So I understand that allies could be a system that kind of supplements artifacts or kind of takes over artifacts. But at the same time, the same level of effort and transparency has to go into allies as it did artifacts. I mean, when artifacts are out and we're testing it, there's no like... I have no idea how this artifact is supposed to work. Like, please tell me. I mean, it's really straightforward how artifacts work. Sometimes there may be like little subtle nuances, like where the Tetra buff still applies for 12 seconds, even if you swap artifacts out and stuff like that. I mean, that's that's getting to a little bit of the nuances, but I mean, it still functions exactly how it's supposed to function. Where allies, I mean, it's basically flip a coin. I mean, testing allies have almost made me not to want to be a tester anymore because of how like convoluted and confusing and like how it follows no logic to how like star levels in interact and everything like that. So what I'm going to do is we're going to jump to some footage because I want to jump to the spreadsheets first because you guys are always harping on how many spreadsheets I use. So we got some footage that I'm going to show you some stuff that's going to continue on this working tenant game. And then we'll jump to the spreadsheets and I'll talk about all the passives. 
because that's what people want to know. And then the whole time I'm going to be, at least I'm going to be, you know, accountable and providing full transparency from what I say. So let's get into it. So like I said, I wanted to show this before jumping into the spreadsheets to look over all the passives uh, to show you uh, this game that I want to play with you. So the first one, we're going to be looking at Flashpoint Batman's Combat Suture. So we're only at star level 6, which is basically the first rank we unlock this. And like I said, upon activating your weapon buff, heal based on your position. So, straightforward, what do you think? So, I've already damaged myself with the uh, Linares, just so this is easier. Pop the buff. Great. We'll lower my health a little bit again. 12 seconds is almost up. And hit it again. Oh look, another heal. 12 seconds. Plus, since the weapon buff is 20 is uh, 20 seconds, I'm getting actually a stronger heal on the second one because it's already part of the buff. So I'll hit it again. 12 seconds. Great. So, now, let's move up to star level 7. I like, this isn't like a what I'm going to show you isn't a bug or anything like that. I've, I've tried this, trust me. I've tried this multiple times, restarting the uh, test server, changing characters, switching characters, whatever, just because I thought it was so unbelievable. So let's uh, damage ourselves again. Pop the heal buff. And even then it might be not strong to kill us. So like I said, we're going to hit this at 12 seconds and see what happens. Oh, no heal. Actually, we'll take off amulet now. Let's try this again. 12 seconds is almost up. This will be 24 seconds. Any heal? Nope. Let's try this again. This would be 36 seconds. I know it's 30 seconds, but big spoiler but it's technically not 30 seconds it's th it's 30 seconds so so level at level six it's 12 seconds at level seven it's 30 seconds and now we're going to jump to eight and then just so that we can see it will pop on uh, aim that again just so we can take some damage. Maybe a little bit lower. That'll work. So we got heal debuff number one. So that was at the 12 second mark. This will be at the 24 second mark. Nothing. This will be at the 32nd mark. Nothing. And just for laughs, let's do 48 seconds. Nope. So we, so the uh, we have a situation where six works too fast, seven works like too slow. And then eight, nine, ten don't even work. So I mean, imagine that. Imagine, imagine screwing up that so much that like level six works, but level seven, eight, nine, ten don't work properly at all. So that's that's pretty funny. So the other thing we'll show is we can uh, jump over here to this one. Don't need uh, amulet on amulet on one. So we'll get in combat. We're gonna pop cyborg. I'm going to pop Berserk. That was a little bit fast. Cyborg probably wasn't the best example to use, but, I mean, as you just saw, the, uh, the 472. Uh, do I have the damage logs up? I forgot Cyborg. Probably wasn't the best example to use for that. So that'll show it there. So the the sonic bolt. This was cyborg's damage. 
and then this was Berserk. So what I mean by that is all allies count towards Berserk damage. That one they say they can't fix. So just letting you know, all your ally damage will count towards Berserk. Because why not? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that makes sense, doesn't it? So that brings us to funny part number two or three. House of Legends bot. It's cooldown should be coming up shortly. So this will work with House of Legends bot and Flashpoint Batmans. But uh, we'll show it here. So we'll go back to the damage log. We're going to pay attention to the hit counter. So we'll drop combat just so that doesn't count. So, 11 hits, 284k. Okay, so continuing on in the game, is it intended or not? We're on Doomsday now. We're going to pop Hard Light Shield just so that I don't get instantly killed. And we're going to pop House Legends Bot. So, General Adam Wig, when we all showed up and unleashed Doomsday, not good. And on the hit counter when it comes up. 23 hits. It was technically 22 because I had one. So what that means is that Flashpoint Batman's pistol attacks and House of Legends pistol attacks will do double the amount of hits on bosses. It just has to be a boss. It could be on Captain Vans in the solo. It could be on the weekly bounties, Doomsday. doesn't matter. It'll do double hits on bosses or boss level NPCs and then only do 11 hits on sparring targets or regular ads. So a little bit interesting there, because, I mean, you just saw House of Legends bot do 675k damage <laughs> on Doomsday at CR 344. And that's that's from a rare. So if you don't have Cyborg level for literally... I mean, it's free at this point, because if you're logging in through your daily login rewards, House of Legends bot is literally free. And you just saw, saw it do almost 700k damage single target. So... Let's jump on to the next instance. Okay, so I want to get a baseline damage of Cyborg here, so I'm just targeting that target over here, just in a straight line. You know, and Cyborg can be a little bit inconsistent on single damage, but I mean, basically you saw two hits there. But the, the main difference is what you're going to see next. Okay, so now I'm in a slightly different position here. So the sparring target or, or any NPC, if it's up against a wall or backed up against a wall, picture or think of it like Cyborg throwing a, like a ba basketball or a ball or whatever at the wall. It's going to bounce back and hit the target again. And that's the same thing that happens with projectiles. So when he fires it here, the ball lingers around behind the target hitting the wall, bouncing back and back and forth. So now we go from like two or three hits, depending on what a cyborg would normally do, to like five hits. So we're doubling, tripling the damage the cyborg does just because he's back is uh, the target's up against the wall and the projectile is bouncing back and forth between the target and the wall again or lingering around in that spot instead of just disappearing, just how the attack works itself. So an e easy way to increase the damage by cy cyborg tenfold is make sure that you definitely use it or even the tank positions the boss was up in it against a corner or you do it in like the solo like you know for example i keep talking about the the science uh, spire solo but captain vens in a little booth if you back him up against the wall hit a cyborg he'll take out two-thirds of his health so it's an easy way to jump into doing like you know um, over 600k single target in a second all because of how the projectiles and positioning is based so that, that about wraps it up for the uh, the quick game of is it intended or not. And then let's jump over and check out the passives. Okay, so I wanted to make this a little bit more uh, visually appealing in terms of passives instead of just breaking down to straight numbers. 
Uh, so what I did was I broke down and compared each star level rank for the passive to see how it actually impacted it. Because a lot of my tests were done at max rank because I'm assuming players are going to max out their allies. Well, not so much for the legendaries, but at least for the rares and epics, they're they're fairly cheap. But I can understand that players want to know, you know, what happens at level four or five or six. So do I have to go past seven? So I understand that. So let's take a look at that here. So calculator bot. The ability is when taking damage, convert a small percentage of the damage into health. Well, I mean, for one, that ability is a lie. Uh, I mean, you're not actually increasing your health. I mean, you're getting a heal. When taking damage, convert a small percentage. Once again, the percentage is a lie too because I tested this on simple ads and like Doomsday. So if an ad hits me for like a thousand damage, I'm still going to get a heal of 65, 27. Or if I get hit by Doomsday hand clap that takes like 80k my da my health off, I still get 65, 27. So there is no converting a small percentage of damage. It's no matter whenever you take damage, any sort of damage, it's going to be the same level of heal. And it's a heal, not increasing your health. So once again, we get like one sentence description that makes no sense. And then we probably have like a paragraph of like explaining who calculator bot is to players. So, I mean, it's just backwards logic. So star level. So my base restoration pretty much stayed the same. I tried to increase it just to show like a heal defense. So it'll start level three, 29, three, 23, 49, 48. My heal was 65, 27. And the internal cooldown was 30 seconds. That means that uh, every 30 seconds, as long as I was taking damage, I'd, I'd proc that heal. And then I increased my resto a little bit by putting out some artifacts just as, to show you that it's dependent on resto. So it's the same cooldown, but your heal will be based on your resto. So that your heal, like how strong the heal it is, has no impact whatsoever with star level. It's basically just the cooldown. So with star level 5 or 4, you get 25 second cooldown. Star level 5 is 20 seconds. But the heal is the exact same strength. That's dependent completely on your resto. And then we move to House of Legends bot. So get power back from stunning an NPC. So base fit, power returned. There's no internal cooldown. So what that means is that as long as you can stun the enemies, you'll get power back every single time. So if they don't resist, you could be like stun, 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 stun off cooldown, like using Gauss Gain or whatever, like a 0.5 seconds done. You'll get power back each time. There's no internal cooldown on the power back. And then the power returned. The power returned is based on star level. So the logic with that is that, so you have calculator bot, the heal from calculator bot is not based on star level, but the power return from house legends bot is based on star level. So it's like, what? I mean, I, the, the one thing that like summarizes how I tested these allies or like, if you could see my face in person, it'd be like the Nick young meme. Like, it's like, what? Like that's, that's what basically I'm going through while testing all this. So moving on to Oracle. Oracle, star level does nothing. There is no impact whatsoever from star level 3, 4, or 5. So we go from one where it impacts just the cooldown, one where it impacts the power returned, and then the third one does nothing. I tested each and every one. I started at like uh, like gray durability, yellow durability, and red durability just, just to see the differences. Each and every star rank, um, the repair amount was by three. So each time it repaired, it would go by three durability. And that was every five seconds. So every five seconds, you would get th a three increase on durability. The one interesting thing was that it follows a pattern and it always follows the lowest piece. So say you like your face piece was, was more damaged than any other piece. It would start with your face piece and then go in order. And the order was uh, head, shoulders, back, hands, waist, feet, face, chest, legs, and a weapon. So every five seconds, it would heal like the head. Five seconds later, the shoulders by three. Five seconds later, the back by three. Five seconds later, the hands by three, and so on. And we would keep doing that. So that's pretty slow. I expected a little bit faster. So that means, so I broke my gear to zero and it took 28 minutes and 20 seconds at, st at star level five to repair my gear completely because it has to go like all, all 10 pieces of gear or is, or is it eight or 10, uh, two, four, six, yeah, 10. So 10 pieces of gear by three, then 10 pieces of gear by three, then 10 pieces of gear by three and so on. That's, and that's why it takes 28 minutes and 20 seconds. So, I mean, it's still somewhat useful. I mean, you'd have to be damaged gear going into a raid, and then by the time you got out of it, you'd probably be backed up to 100. 
I mean, for me, I'm not going to level something just for 30 minutes. I'm just going to go to the vendor and, and pay for it. But I mean, if you really want to do that, I mean, it is cheap. So moving on to the flash, like I said uh, in my previous video, this flash passive is just impossible to, to test. I mean, I have no way to think how to test it because every way I think how to test flash would just be the regular combat. So if, if I if I put flash on and slowly move away from like a sparring target after being in combat, that's not flash impacting me dropping combat. That is the getting far enough away from the sparring target to get out of range. So, I mean, no idea. I mean, it's a gimmicky thing anyway. Not that it's going to help because it doesn't work in combat anyway. So, I mean, it's not going to help me in a raid at all. So it's whatever. I'm not, I'm not going to waste an hour or two hours trying to figure out how to perfectly test this where A, the damage sucks on Flash, and B, it's a useless passive. So, I mean, the only people leveling it would be the ones that love Flash and wouldn't care what it was like anyway because they just want to see Flash. So Cyborg, um, I'm also assuming that you always have your generators above 50 in this test. I didn't test without generators being lower than 50. It just wouldn't do anything. Uh, and plus, it's super easy to keep them above 50. I mean, it's like only like like what, 60, 70 source marks every 60 days. So it's a little bit awkward. I mean, it's not a perfect thing to test because you can't measure it because it's passive. Uh, it definitely does work. But the problem is that it's hard to make it like a tangible proof because like the test I did, the, the easiest test I could think of was just doing jackhammers on Doomsday. But then at the same time, he can stun you and then you have the breakout and then the breakout costs power. And then you get a little bit of power return. So, I mean, it's not like perfect variables, which is a bummer. So that's why you might be like plus or minus a few hits. Because sometimes I break out. Sometimes I didn't have to break out. So, but I mean, you can still see it working. So it does, it's a slight difference between the star levels. But at the same time, Cyborg is like by far the best damage. You want him leveled anyway. And I mean, it's really not that much to level to 75,000k. I mean, through the daily rewards, we have like what, 20k already? Or 20 or 30k? And I mean, it's not unreasonable to have to spend like 10 bucks or something on the marketplace to level it, considering how good it is for damage and passive. So, I mean, that's realistic. So we jumped to Zoom. Zoom is also a little bit annoying because I wasn't, uh, it's a little bit hard. Well, I mean, I could have done it, but it, it was just really tedious if I was going to test milliseconds. And that was like really based on like how I was timing it and like going frame by frame in my video. So basically I would record myself doing a race and, and Metro on the bridge and then stop the recording and then go back to the recording and kind of like freeze frame and count the seconds. So that's why these should be a little bit more accurate if I was using milliseconds, but I mean, whatever. I mean, it's, it's enough to show that it works. I mean, that's the point. Uh, it shows that star, like the, as your star level goes up, it goes better. Uh, and then based on what the description, what the dev said, like way back on test server, it's supposed to be 5%, 10%, 15%, 20% and 25% faster. Which, which makes sense. It's about three seconds at 25%. So flash is, or zoom is working. And that's, like I said, with the four, that was changed to non-combat movement. So you could be fast travel or regular travel. It doesn't work in combat. So it's more like gimmicky. But I mean, at the same time, if you, if you want to level it, you can. It does work. Probably help with some race feats. So flashpoint Batman. So the defense, soul detective... At four or ten, it's all fifteen percent. It didn't have any impact whatsoever star level. And I went to uh, multiple solos to try it, switched characters, relogged just to make sure that if, for whatever reason if it didn't take effect. But it's fifteen percent completely, no matter what star level. And the the combat suture <laughs> that. Uh, you saw that in the video clip, which also makes no sense. It's like star level 6 is 12 seconds, 7 was 30 seconds, and then 8, 9, 10 aren't working. And the heal can crit. And even ironically, um, I think it was like mid-August too on, this, on the test server forums, the developer said that uh, it's the, the health is supposed to be based on 50% of your precision, which makes no sense because, I mean, 50% of 40k is not a 60k heal. Or 50% of 50k is not a 78k heal back. Plus it can crit. So and actually in combat, because this is like super low prec. I was just I was just testing. I didn't have like uh, augments or anything else on. I mean, you're easily going to have way higher prec than that. So you're easily going to get 100k base and then probably crits into like 160. So 
So for Queen Diana, same thing. Testing a duel doesn't work. It doesn't work on sparring targets. It just doesn't work at all. There should be some kind of notification that it is working, that something is debuffed. But weapon damage doesn't change. Nothing does. Uh, don't weaken. Uh, a few things. So the buff is dependent on your CR. So it's not. Ri it didn't increase by star level at all. I can't tell completely because I was only in a group with one other person, like just my alt account on the on the forum, on the uh, test server. So I mean, maybe in a full group of eight, star level might increase it or, or affect it. But I couldn't see. There was to me with myself and one other group member. Star level did not impact how much uh, buff might you got whatsoever. It was the exact same. Uh, but it does impact your CR. So say if you go into like clamp content and, and use uh, Wonder Woman or Queen Anna, sorry, um, that is going to be lower might because the might, the might buff that you get back is completely CR dependent. And it only lasts six seconds. So, I mean, that's, that's probably the buzzkill for a lot of people that were expecting to use that. Uh, when you get a buff breakout, I mean, yeah, it's like 1,600 extra might, which is big, but you only have six seconds to do with that. So you'd have to break out at, at six seconds. Then you have six-second countdown as soon as you break out. So then when you're clipping a supply drop with like a supercharge, maybe, you might get like two or three seconds of buffed. I mean, if you drop like an Eye of the Gemini or whatever. So you're, you're maximizing probably like th maybe three, four seconds, best case scenario. Probably not. A buff, and then that depends on what your rotation is. So, I mean, six seconds, you're only going to get off a few powers. So, not too much practical there. Uh, and also, it counts as yourself. So, I, I did one time just to show you that it works when I'm not in a group at all. And I still got the buff when I broke out because it counts yourself as a group member. So, even if you just run the solo, you'll still get some might. But then you just have to be aware that, you know, each time you break out, you have to, like... Drop a super, you know, hit a trinket, whatever, to get uh, to maximize that buff. So a little, little clunky to use that, that's for sure. So Aquaman, Seaside Restart, once again, just a crappy description. Each star level changes slightly in terms of how much supercharge you use. So 25, 5,000, or 10,000. 90 seconds is the base cooldown, so you only save one second there with a 2,500 or 4. 88, 80. 88, 89, 88, 80, etc. Then it kind of goes down from there. So to a maximum of rank 10, which is going to be 85 seconds cooldown for 25, and 83 seconds for 5, 75 seconds for 10,000, and a little bit overkill, not that you'd ever use it, but 68 seconds for 1,500, or 15,000 that's you used. So like I said before, just most of these have just awful descriptions. I know that developer... Uh, mentioned it was like a few days ago now that he wants to update them. I'm not sure what'll happen there, but I'm not. It doesn't surprise me whatsoever that like people have like no idea what the hell's going on with these allies when they try to read these descriptions. And then we jump to hear my call. So this one, I just wanted like for sure because I mean I've seen so many mixed stuff with this. I think people are just don't have an idea what they're doing or don't understand damage ranges when they're testing this. So the people have said like a, it only works with like Fury and Crystal, and then and then someone else in the forum said they tried the Robot Sidekick and it worked. And then somebody said, oh well, like Suppressor Turret will work. Even the developer said, I'll add Suppressor Turret so it works. I mean, like I'm not a moron. I know how to test things. I know how to set up a pet test. Like I've been doing this like longer than like most people like on the forums. Like I understand how to set up a damage test. So I'm not even going to show parsers this time. I'm just going to show just the actual combat logs. So star level 6, when we unlock it, Robot Sidekick with and without Aquaman, there's no buff. 4,000, 4,056, you know, 15, 425, 15, 294, 14, 925, 15, 322. This is all within like 1% of each other. It's all within a damage range. So there's there's absolutely no buff. And what I was doing, I was doing the whole resummon and resummon thing. So they said, the other stupid thing was that they said, the Hear My Call only works if you like desummon the pet and then resummon it. Because then when you resummon it, the like the uh, passive ability is supposed to acknowledge that you have summoned a pet and then give you like a small damage buff that they still won't say how it applies or how long it lasts or whatever. So, I mean, transparency side, I mean, there's zero transparency with this ability. We still have no idea. There's all mixed messages, people screwing up tests and stuff that don't want to run it properly because this is not working. 
Because A, when would you ever de-summon and re-summon Fury or Crystal in combat? I mean, unless they die. But if you're running a pet build, they're not going to die anyway. So, I mean, if that's how the ability was supposed to work in the first place, that doesn't make any sense. Like, you would never, in the middle of combat in your rotation, like, de-summon Fury or de-summon Crystal and re-summon it just so that you can get, like, a buff damage. That, that would be a giant damage loss. Like, the only trick is that technically, if you're out of, like, you're waiting around doing nothing and Fury's at low power, then you could de-summon it and it resummons the full power. But, I mean, that's the damage buff because it resummons with full power and it, it does its primary attack. But, I mean, everyone's running, like, Fortify Golem or Offering regardless, or it's low damage anyway. So, I mean, that whole ability from the start makes no sense. And even in description, summon pets get a temporary damage increase. So, would you not think that's like a, like a, I summon a Nightmare Bat? Nope, that doesn't apply, you know? <laughs> it's like, I summon Grim or Quizlet. Nope, that doesn't apply. What? So once again, you have a description that makes no sense in terms of how it actually applies to the actual ally. So let's jump to star level 7. I tried Fury. 31,218, like 31,157, 30,996, 29k, 29k, 30. I mean, it's all within the same damage range. The weapon taps were like 21, 21, 31. 21, 20, 2000, like all the small taps, like 1100, 600. Like 1205, 605, 1186, 610, 646, 627, all within like small, like minute percentages of each other, just within a damage range. That's all it is. This is all just a damage range in these two so far. So then I jumped eight. Now we'll try crystal. Same thing. 22, 642, 20, 23, 328. I mean, he's actually doing better without Aquaman. In terms of the damage, I mean, that's his lucky damage ranges, but the same thing. It's all the same numbers. There's no difference. There's no buff. Like, desummon crystal, resummon it. I mean, the sparring targets, they have a limited power anyway, so it didn't really matter if I desummoned or resummoned it. So I was doing that here just to see on the test to see if, if the ally would, uh, if Hear My Call would actually work as intended, or, or who knows if it's working as intended. I don't even know what's intended. But it's definitely not working. 100%. It is not working. If you are doing this test and you think that there's a buff, then you're doing it incorrectly, or you need to keep do. You need to keep getting more numbers to actually get a damage range. So number nine, they said this pressure turret should work, so I tried that. Same thing, fifteen six oh six, fifteen three hundred. I mean, you want to think the damage buff is three hundred damage? No, nope, that's all within a damage range. It's all within like one percent. Everything else, 39, 51, 37, 38, 38, 4,000, 4, 41, 38, all the same. Express the turret. And then 10, I did Snow Devil. I don't even know if Snow Devil works. I mean, it's a summoned pet, just like Swarm from nature. Same thing, no damage, no difference. So I don't know what, I don't, oh, I don't care what people say on the forums. Here my call does not work. Nor does it make any sense as an ability. I mean, we already have something like God Wave on Source Shard, and that works perfectly fine. You know when it's applied because you see the God Wave proc animation on your pets, and you can see readily you can you can see the increase in damage. So temporary damage increase. How long? How long does it increase? What does it increase? I mean, there's so many unanswered questions about all this junk, and that that's what makes me upset. I mean, I don't care if this is like a like not even a pay-to-win system or they're trying to make money off it. I mean, whatever. It's at the, I mean, that's their right to create a system like this or segue it from artifacts because, like I said, we already have so many artifacts, you can't like realistically come up with artifacts every single episode. That's too much. And there's so many iconic allies they can pull from. Like They could do the whole Justice League if you wanted to. You got Superman, you got Martian Manhunter, you got everyone else. There's so many more uh, iconic allies you could do a part of this ally system. But if this is how we're, this is how what to expect from allies, I never, I never want to see more allies because it's just a hot mess, and there's zero, absolutely zero transparency from the people who created it. We have not heard one thing. There's not one thing that's been said since the episode released. The last thing that was said was October, or sorry, not October, August twentieth was the last thing that was said about allies, and that's before the episode even released. The episode released on the twenty fifth. So we've got calculator bot which changed the day of the episode 
because this was basically heel on a roll, which, I mean, you can see my my past videos as evidence. Zoom, his damage wasn't nerfed until the day of the episode too. So you get all these players leveling up Zoom because they think it's the highest damage because they've seen my videos, which, I mean, it's not my fault. I did a video right before the DLC released. I put it up on the 24th and tested Zoom and said it was still OP. So, I mean, I, I don't fault players for leveling that. As soon as I saw that they nerfed it, I'm like, what the hell? I, I had to put out that community post saying, like, don't level it because his damage is nerfed. And, of course, I, I get tells like so many people did. So, I mean, that's that's pretty much a scam at that point. Like, how can it take a, a month to adjust his, like, his damage? And you're just leading on players at that point. So, I mean... I don't even want to beat a dead horse at this point. Like, this is not about, like, beating a dead horse. This is about, like, transparency. Like, so so I, I've shown you everything. I, I've shown you all the damage of, through different star levels and tiers. I've shown you how the, all the passives works. I've, I've shown you, like, all the weird things that's happening with allies in-game. So at this point, there's nothing else for me to do. So... I mean, the balls in anyone else's court, I've with allies, I'm just going to forget about them because it just stresses me out testing these things because of how friggin like convoluted they are and illogical. So that's it for me. So there, here's all the passives. That was the breakdown. That was the pet breakdown. You know, I spent enough time on this and I put enough effort into this. So we'll leave it at this. Take care, guys. We'll see you in the next video.